Hello, Noble Knitter. It's Nancy Queen. And today I'm going to answer a very important question in knitting. Do you block or don't you block? I'd love to hear. Let me know in the comments below. Blocking is one of those things that we just don't know. Should we block a garment? Shouldn't we block a garment? And some people just decide I block everything or I block nothing. So you don't have to do that. You can choose to block or not block based on the project. And I kind of have a few rules of thumb that I follow when I decide whether or not I'm going to block. <clears throat> and there are a few things that blocking does. So first of all, what it does is it relaxes the stitches. And if your stitches tend to be uneven, it makes them much more even and consistent. So it makes your knitting look a little better, especially if you're knitting something that's highly textured or stuck in that stitch, just makes it all look nicer. And third of all, if you're looking to get more mileage out of a project that you've blocked, you absolutely will. So I love using this for shawls that are very simple, garter or stockinette stitch or a lace, definitely knit a lace because it will open that lace up and just make it come to life and make a huge difference in your project. But um, there are some yarns that I will block and some that I won't block. For example, I have this really fluffy chenille yarn. This is one I would not block when it's knitted. I also have this um, thick and thin yarn. It's one that I would not block because I really want this texture to stay in the way that it is. I don't want it to, um, I don't want it to relax. I just want it like this with its, it ends up being a very nubbly texture because you have thick roving and thin strands. So I wouldn't block that. And then <clears throat> I have a scarf knitting boot camp that if you haven't heard about it, it's five weeks. You learn to make five different scarves and lots of tips and tricks along the way. And it's a great next level skill build, build, build excuse me, builder project. Um, you will learn in this course how to cable knit, how to um, pucker knit, modular knit and more. And I will provide a link in the description below in case you're interested. And the rest of this video is actually one that's featured in the course showing you how to block your garments. But this is one of the um, scarves that I made for the boot camp, and this is called the Pucker Up Scarf. And you can see it has a lot of texture. And, and there's also a really soft halo to this yarn. So this is one that I would not block. I would just leave it as is because I think it's absolutely gorgeous, just like this. This is also, this is also a scarf from my boot camp, and it's a called the Clever Cables. This is one I would absolutely block because it really relaxed the stitches. It made the separation between the cables much nicer and evener and it gave me a lot more mileage. I think I got six extra inches to this scarf after I blocked it. So now that you know the facts on blocking, I'm going to show you my favorite method of wet blocking. Now it's time to block our scarf. So get some cool water in a bowl, your scarf, a wool wash of some type. I use soak, some pins and a couple of extra towels. Now you could use a yoga mat, but I tend to like using a towel and some sewing pins. And first I'm just going to put a few drops of the wool wash or soak into my water, mix it around a little bit. And then I'm just going to take my entire scarf and submerge it in the water. You want to make sure that you're not using hot water. Even though this is a super wash, I try to stick with cool water. And now I'm not, I'm just soaking it and pushing it down so that all of the stitches are getting wet. 
uh, you don't want to rub it together. But you can see just by doing this how much it's starting to relax those stitches. And it'll open up the width of the scarf. Now I'm going to let that soak for a little bit and when I come back we'll finish it up. I let my scarf soak in this bath for 10 to 15 minutes and now I'm ready to take it out. I can move these things out of the way and now I'm just going to get it ready to put in my towel. And the big thing now is getting all of that moisture out of the scarf. So you don't want to wring it. You can see I'm just gently squeezing it. And just keep squeezing it a little bit at a time. Don't rub the um, stitches together. You just want to gently squeeze it all out. And then once I've gotten as much water out, I can take the water away. And now I'm going to just put it on the towel to try to squeeze out even more water. You want to get as much water out of your scarf before you put it on the blocking board so that it'll dry as quickly as possible. So I'm just laying this out in my towel. And once I have it just the way I want it, I'm going to cover it all up so that now I have two layers of towel to try to get moisture out of my scarf. And then I'm going to roll it up like a, a burrito. <laughs> I'm just going to roll that right up in the towel. Once it's rolled, I just put as much weight on it as I can to try to squeeze out the excess dampness. You just want to get as much water out of there as possible. And I moved the camera a little because these are flowers that my daughter got for her 21st birthday and I think they're so beautiful. I just wanted to have you have a little bit of the same sunshine from these pretty flowers. So it's feeling pretty dry. I mean it's still a little damp but it feels a lot better and I think now we're ready to move it over to the blocking area. Now I'm ready to do the actual blocking part. So I took a towel and folded it in half. I used a long um, bath sheet and I think that that will fit. Uh, you could also use a yoga mat or the blocking boards that are that they um, link together so you can create the size that you need. And I'm just going to go ahead and lay out my scarf. I try to get it nice and even. And then I take out my pins and I start the blocking process. If I can get my pins open, I'll show you. Okay, they're open. Now I just start at one side and I like to start in the center. Um, sometimes if I start at one end, it just ends up looking a little wonky. So I start in the middle and then I just work in both directions. So I stretch it out a little bit and then I pin it. Now you're going to notice that the wheat colored end seems like it has a little bit more um, pull in it. It it The gray end is like nice and smooth and straight. But you can see the wheat end gets these little curves in between each pin. And that's because that end is the stockinette side. So we know that stockinette rolls and it's doing what it loves to do. It's rolling. Um, but the other side, the stockinette is faced down. on, re So it's the reverse side that's up. So it's not rolling quite as much. But just go ahead and block it nicely. Take your time with this. You want it to look nice. Now I do want to tell you that I have my puppy and she decided uh, a few hours later that she was going to start playing with the pins and she messed up my whole project. And I just stopped what I was doing, 
went and got everything and re-blocked it. Nothing bad happened to my scarf. And if you're blocking, blocking gets a little messed up while it's drying, just go ahead and repin it. All is not lost. Okay, I'm now down to one of the ends and I just wanna show you how I block that. Make sure that you keep the ends or the corners the same distance as you've been blocking the width of the rest of it. For some reason, I don't know if it's me or everyone in general, I tend to want to stretch it even farther, but don't do that. Just block one corner and then block the other corner and you'll have a very nice edge. And then I put one or two in the middle as well. When you're done blocking, let your project dry overnight. You want it to be completely dry before you remove the pins. Are you ready to learn more? Visit me at noblenetsu.com slash scarf bootcamp and we will dive right in. There's also a link in the description. I can't wait to see you there.